Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be playing a game that came on Steam, I think about three, four months ago, called Sim Yunta. In the game, you take on the role of a military dictator of a small Caribbean state, uh, a fictional island state in the Caribbean, uh, during the 1970s, late 1970s, and uh, basically your objective is to stay in power as long as possible, accumulate as much money as possible in your own private Swiss bank account, and uh, obviously to stay alive. In that sense, it's kind of a little bit like Tropico, but what the game really reminds me of is a game called Hidden Agenda from the late 80s or early 90s, which was a game which put you in control of a Latin American state after a coup, which is uh, basically the same situation you find yourself in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start a game. So you can see here our first day in office. And each day you're greeted with kind of a slow graphic of you leaving your personal palace or residence here and then uh, kind of walking across this courtyard and um, you walk to the presidential palace, which is where you see that pineapple flag um, and the other two guards waiting the direction we're walking to. And hopefully nothing happens while you're walking. Okay, so obviously first day on office, nothing's going to happen because we haven't even been able to do anything yet. Um, so at this point we're going to choose our name. So we'll choose Historical Gamer. You can see our military. We were a military general and we are the dictator of Rusinia. Uh, we're 45 years old. So you can see here on the screen, uh, the game has several different options. You can go to the options, you can proceed to your turn. There's an army screen, a secret police, a money, and an actions. So first let's go ahead and let's start on the money screen because that's really where this game, well the money and the secret police screen are where I play this game. Um, you can see here we're starting off with a negative balance of 15 million. So we're in the red by 15 million dollars, which really means we need to balance things out. We've got a little bit of a buffer here with 50 million in the bank, but obviously we're going to run out of money real quick. So let's figure that out. <clears throat> Okay, so I think the best thing to do is consult the secret police screen. So the budget here will tell you your expenses on the right side. You can see state expenses are 22 million, education 3.5 million, healthcare 3 million, allowances 5.9 million, army, police, etc. Uh, we also have 2.3 million in prison. Uh, and if we take a look at the secret police screen, that will tell us kind of what we can do. So, for example, what can we do to increase our revenue? Well, we can raise taxes. We could raise taxes on the landowners, the industrialists, the businessmen, the parents, or the peasants, the workers. But if we consult our secret police screen here, we can see here that we have a 45% opposition with the workers, 40% with the peasants. You can see the army likes us at 5% opposition, and the police like us at 3% opposition. Um, those two probably because we came into power as the result of a military coup. Uh, police states, obviously the police and the army would naturally probably be on our side. Um, you can see we have an army of 120,000 people roughly, and the police of 50,000. Uh, you can also see the landowners, the industrialists, and the businessmen are all okay with us. Uh, and America has a 50% approval rating as well. We also have 59,000 people in prison. Um, and then there's about a thousand gorillas that we're facing. So there's a few things we can do to save money. Um, the first we could do is we could go ahead and raise taxes. Now obviously you can see here, let's just take a look. We can see the army. Uh, let's look, landowners are at 7% opposition. So we make about 16 million a turn off of them in taxes. If we increase it by 1% up to 5, and I'm assuming these are percentages, it'll increase to 21 million and it'll drop our balance to negative 11 instead of negative 15. But you can see the landowners went from disliking us at 7% all the way up to 17. So obviously there's a little bit of a buffer there. We could increase taxes a bit more and still be okay. The industrialists are at 10% disapproval. We increase it by 1% and they jump up to 20% disapproval. So again, you can see raising taxes is obviously not popular, but so far things seem okay. We're only at negative 8 million and um, you know we still have relatively strong support between them. We can raise the taxes on the businessmen and likewise they increase their dislike for us by 6%. Um, but by raising those taxes we're now almost even. We're at negative 6.9 million. Now one other thing we can do in order to cut expenses 
is we can go to this action screen here and you'll see we have a whole bunch of options. We can sack the police chief, the army chief, we can sell an island, which I don't really know what that does, other than it seems to bring in a whole lot of money. I don't know if you can only do it once or, you know, how many islands we have under our control. Um, you can strengthen your personal army, so you can basically build a, a military that's loyal to you rather than the state. Uh, we can run a personal campaign, which is just kind of like a propaganda campaign, but that costs money. It increases your popularity, but again, it costs money. We can attack the guerrillas, which is a military action. The army will like that, although it'll actually conversely weaken the army. Despite that, um, we can attack the guerrillas, and it'll weaken the guerrillas. So if we look at the secret police here, we can see there's a thousand guerrillas that are in the mountains fighting against us. They have 12 strength, and it's enough to cause some problems. So they could potentially pose a threat to us. So attacking them might be a good idea. Um, we can execute the prisoners, or we can release the prisoners, or arrest our enemies. So in this case, if we execute the prisoners, there's about 50,000 people that are in prison. You can see here the police will actually approve us, and it'll increase their strength. The prisoners, <laughs> well, they will, their disapproval will go away, and so will their strength, because they'll all be dead. The Americans don't really seem to care, the guerrillas won't care, the army won't care, landowners, industrialists won't care, businessmen won't be thrilled. They'll increase their disapproval by 15%. And the peasants and workers will disapprove substantially. So we're probably better off if we release our prisoners, which the police will not like at all. Uh, you see their disapproval will go up by 30. Uh, the army is kind of disapproving. The landowners, are, landowners and industrialists aren't approving. But on the positive side, you've got the workers and the peasants who will approve very strongly. We'll also save the money by getting them out of jail. So we can go ahead and do that. Um, it will actually increase, it looks like, the gorilla strength. Maybe some of those prisoners have decided, you know what, we're going to go fight with the gorillas despite the fact that you released us. Um, and you can also see here by doing that, we piss the police off. So they claim they're not strong enough to provide this information, but it may just be because they're upset with us. That's one thing you have to factor in. So we'll go ahead and we can increase police funds. You see we, we saved $2.3 uh, by releasing the prisoners, but now we need to go ahead and increase the police's budget by 10%. Again, that won't be popular. You can see here the workers and peasants will be opposed to it. The uh, um, police will be happy. The army won't really like it because that they're kind of rivals, and the landowners and the industrialists um, will actually be pleased. Uh, the Americans won't uh, mind either, apparently. So we'll go ahead and do that. We increase police funds by 10%. And we actually net a positive return of about 1.7 million because we saved 2.3 million by releasing the prisoners, increased the police budget by 700,000. So it still turns out okay for us, and we get this information all back. And now that we gave the police more money, they're okay with us. They're a little bit happier with us at the moment. Okay, now there is a problem with the gorillas. They do have 17 strength, so again, they're growing in strength. We need to do something about that. Um, now that we went ahead and released those prisoners of the workers and the peasants, they're very happy with us. You can see their opposition dropped all the way down to 28 and 27% respectively. And I think what we can do then is we can take advantage of that and increase taxes on both of them by a percent, which brings the opposition back up, but still healthy. Only 35% disapproval, 30% in the workers and peasants, which are the vast majority of the population. So at that point, we balance the budget up to $600,000 of a positive. Now what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and attack the gorillas. This won't be popular with the workers and peasants. Everyone else will actually be happy by it. The interesting thing is the army is happy by it. Their opposition goes down, but they also lose strength because they use it fighting the war. And it costs $25 million, so we're really digging in to our, uh, you know, this is a one-time expense, $25 million. You can see here it drops our balance substantially, but uh, because it's a one-time expense, I'm not too worried about it. We'll go ahead and proceed. You can see we have 2,600 victims of the Junta, um, and we've been in power for one month. So the 2,600 victims are probably members of the guerrilla. You can see they were above 10,000, now they're below. And you can see their strength dropped from 17 to 12. So again, the campaign weakened the guerrillas. So then you can see we're not going to wait while we walk to the palace again. So we'll just go ahead and hit the space bar. And Hurricane Terror, Deaths and Floods. Well, that's not good. Um, hurricanes are bad for business, and you can see here our balance has actually dropped. We were at 600,000 positive last turn, but the hurricanes obviously have hurt businesses enough that we're into the red. I think what we may do is, given the, the hurricanes, we can ask the Americans for aid. It's not terribly popular, especially with the police, but um, it gives us a whole bunch of money. It does give the gorillas a strength. I have to say no.
Oh, well. Um. Okay, so again, I kind of feel like I'm being suckered into giving the police more and more money, but some, you really need this screen. There's an alternative screen, the army screen, we really didn't look at, where it gives you the total strength of the army. Um, also gives you the strength of your rival countries around you, because sometimes you may go to war with them. You can't instigate a war, which I find a little bit frustrating. It would be cool to just be able to click and go to war, uh, but it doesn't look like we can do that. Um, but we, there's an intelligence service report, so the army gives you a much more... Um, less granular, but it does give you the risk of assassination or revolution, which is useful, but it's less useful than the secret police where it tells you the actual opposition levels. At least that's my opinion. Um, let's see. So increasing the police gives us that stuff back, but our balance is negative three million. I think we'll just go ahead and proceed. I don't want to mess with people and raise taxes again. Hopefully the hurricane and now an earthquake. Okay, lovely. So, hurricane and now an earthquake and our budget is in trouble. Um, country doesn't like us very much. Uh, we can afford to raise taxes on business landowners and industrialists a little bit. So we'll increase it by one on all of them. That'll give us a positive $2.2 .2 million budget um, to help offset these natural disasters. Although these other people don't like us so much anymore. With that 2.2 .2 million, we could make the peasants like us a little bit. We'll go ahead and increase expenses, or increase education, and then increase health expenses. So we increase both of those by 10%. Only cost us $700,000 to increase both of those. And you can see here it actually helped pacify um, some of these opposition parties and increases our overall popularity. Americans' favor is also increased to 61%, which is good to see. And we're still in the positive uh, money range. So we'll go ahead and end the turn. Skip ahead again. Okay, so now you can see the gorillas are becoming a problem again. Their strength is increasing up to 13. Um, country is slowly becoming more and more less, or more and more less, less and less popular with us. Uh, we don't have enough money for a war right now. The Americans like us a little bit more, so maybe we can ask for. There they go. The Americans gave us 50 million dollars. Okay, cool. So now that we have 50 million dollars. Need to go ahead and increase the police funds so they'll give us information again, which seems kind of kind of treasonous if you ask me. Um, you can see our balance is down to six hundred thousand positive. Um, we are getting UN benefits as well on our on our balance sheet. Um, we have sixty million dollars in the or seventy three million dollars in the bank, so we have enough to fight a war against these um, gorillas. And. Workers and peasants aren't happy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and increase allowances. It'll make the workers and peasants happy. It does cut into our balance by about 600000 But again, it makes them... Oh, come on. And I already increased police funding, so I can't do anything right now. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll attack the gorillas and use our $25 million to do that. So we've been in power. The United States would like you to declare war on Hermosidia. So here's the problem. If we do that, we're probably going to lose. I think I think our military is too weak, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Yeah, Hermosidia is substantially stronger than us, so we're going to lose that war. <laughs> Crap. Um... <sighs> yeah, and it looks like the peasants and workers are probably about to overthrow us. Well, if they're going to try that, we might as well screw with them and raise their taxes. I mean, they all hate us, right? Opposition 100%. Yeah, we're going to tax you out of, out of existence. Hopefully the military will come through on our side. We can't raise taxes higher than 9, but at least it uh, helps offset these massive war expenses of $50 million this turn. Um, go ahead and proceed. Uh oh. I'm kind of concerned that I don't see anyone out here. I feel like if there's a 100% chance they were going to rebel against me, there should be these. Normally, when there's a revolution, people show up in the courtyard here, and you just kind of are told there's a revolution that's occurring. Um, but yeah. What am I doing? War lost. Thousands dead or injured. What will the Americans do? So, we lost the war. The Americans still like us, though. You can see our workers and peasants hate us because of how much we're taxing them. So we're going to go ahead and drop the taxes because we don't need them to be that high to begin with. 
you can see the opposition slowly starts to come down if we drop taxes. Slowly. They still don't like us very much. They're probably going to revolt. Um... We got a pretty healthy economy right now. I guess we could arrest our enemies. What will happen if we do that? Everyone will kind of dislike us less. But it will make them less strong. But I'm not too worried about their strength. I think if I can get the army to side with me, then, um, then we win. Then we'll be fine. So I guess I'm going to increase my personal army. Build a... Let's go ahead and build a personal army and proceed. Okay, here's the revolution I was talking about. You can see all these people in the courtyard kind of protesting against us. Revolution! So let's see what happens here. Guerrillas revolt. Mr. President, guerrillas started a revolution and many unhappy people from all parties joined. Revolutionary's total strength is at 18%. We're going to stay and fight. Uh-oh. The army will help me, yeah. I'll give him whatever you want. So this is a nearly even fight. 46 versus 47. You win! The leaders of the revolution were arrested and executed. So we won by the skin of our teeth, largely because of our general Urola. But his ambition is a bit high, so I know that's not something we talked about. His ability of 8 is pretty good. But the ambition factor also plays a role in how much of a threat they are. Their ability allows them to fight wars very effectively, so in that situation we had a little bit of a um, gap in terms of our strength versus the enemy, but the ability overcame that. The problem is his ambition of 8 is rather high as well, and there's a chance he could try and overthrow me. So ideally you want someone with high ability and low ambition. Unfortunately, that is pretty uncommon to find a general who is really good and doesn't think too much of himself. I think what I may do is replace him with General Lojo, who uh, isn't very, his ability is only a four, which is kind of middling, but he does have only two ambition. He's the only guy who has low ambition and more ability than his ambition that I can see on here, so I think that's what I may do. So if we look at, we are so unpopular, increase police funds. Oh, well, you know what we'll do? We'll wait one turn. Okay. Request from the landowners. Mr. President, guerrillas are getting stronger every day, and they're a constant threat to our plantations. You must order the army to attack them. Uh, sure. Your army mobilized against the guerrillas. Okay. You're not so popular with us. I'm sorry. Maybe if we increase our police funds? Proceed. There we go. Oh, God. We're about to have another freaking... Wait, why doesn't the army like me? What? Um, Increase army funds. Proceed. Money. Or secret police. What? <sighs> I've killed over 10,000 people, so I win a medal. Huzzah! Okay. A request from the peasants. Mr. President, the land is in the hands of a few families who are getting richer while we are dying from hunger. Please make a redistribution of the 1%. So, this would turn the landowners against us, who we just appeased last turn. It would also turn the industrialists against us. It would strengthen the army and the police's resistance to us, and it would make the Americans unhappy. Wait, why are the Americans the anti-cap? I guess that would be kind of socialist to do that. We'll reject your request. I've been in power for nine months now. Uh, increase police funds. Proceed. Kind of getting reckless with my budget here. Wow, no one likes us. Okay, that's a problem. Um... So our poli chief, poli chief of police has pretty high ambition. Our general has pretty high ambition. So we're going to sack the army chief. Uh, that may not be a good idea. The army will probably revolt against us. We'll do it anyway. Put General Lojo in charge. We'll sack the police chief. It's going to make them hate us too. 
and because the other guy had uh, really high ambition, which I was not totally comfortable. So I'll go with Colonel Valadin. And see, this is stupid. I sacked the police chief. I put someone new in charge. And you would think I could pick a yes, yes man who would, you know, go along with whatever I want. But apparently not. Anyway, proceed. So another revolution. Um, stay and fight. Mr. President, your personal army is at strength at 1%, but you can ask for help from the army. Okay, so it looks like we'll probably win this one as well. You win, leaders are executed. Problem is the police don't like me. I have no money because everyone's dying. Actually, what is our population? Well, I can't even tell. Whoa, possibility of an assassination attempt seems rather high. Um, I want to run away. Mr. President, we can't proceed the next month. Flee the country! Wait. Better start running. Oh no, I don't have a helicopter. No! <laughs> Oh, there was no chance that I was going to make it out of there. They they executed me. Why am I getting a state funeral? That doesn't make sense. If they executed me, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't get flowers in a nice casket. Uh, I had to give up there. There was no chance I was going to get assassinated next turn. And the police hated me, the army hated me, and I had no money left. So, yeah. Uh, lesson is, if you want to flee the country, buy an escape helicopter so you can fly away. I wonder if you can escape on foot if you're more popular. Anyway, guys, that is Sim Yunta. I had a lot of fun playing uh, that for a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And um, maybe I'll do a little bit more in the future. It's a fun little game. It's only $5 right now. I think it's on sale for the, the Christmas Steam sale. So if that's something that floats your boat, you can check it out. Um, I mentioned that it's similar to Hidden Agenda in a lot of ways. And it is, but um, I wouldn't quite... It's not up to the level of... Uh, Hidden Agenda. Hidden Agenda was a much more serious game, um, and you had to deal with a lot of serious issues, um, a very text-heavy game. So um, I wouldn't compare it favorably if you're talking about depth, but if you're just looking for a fun little you know, time kill and, and you want to have fun pretending you're a dictator or a generalissimo, then uh, it's an interesting little game. Anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate you watching, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.